What is up guys, Greedy Knight here breaking down how damage is calculated in Monster Hunter Rise. You will learn the basics of Monster Hunter Math in order to help you build better armor sets. This is an entirely optional topic to learn if you are only concerned with having fun, but for those who want to step up their hunting game, this is the first step for doing so. Let's get into it. Here are the four equations. I will go over each one as I explain the variables. I've separated each section via timestamp, so just jump to the section you need to review. Feel free to pause here if you want to see all of the equations in one frame. Attack is the main source of your damage. Higher attack always translates to increased damage. Every weapon has an attack value, making the game centered around this stat. It is important, but you don't always need to max out on it. You need a balance of other modifiers as well as attack to apply optimal damage. Element only applies an additional damage boost against monsters with a weakness to that element. In theory, you can obtain higher damage using a given element, but only against specific monsters and on specific hit zones. It requires a bit more practice since you must focus on specific body parts to maximize elemental damage. It should be common knowledge to build one element weapon for each of the five elements to cover all of your matchups. For Blade Masters, Sharpness applies a flat modifier to your attacks based on your current sharpness level, ranging from red to white, as well as purple when Sunbreak rolls around. The sharpness consumption rate is often minus 1 sharpness per hit, doling faster for moves that guard with the blade and multi-hits. Do note that getting knocked back during a guard also increases the amount of sharpness consumed. You never want to be in any sharpness level below green because of the 75% or greater reductions. Sharpness maintenance skills and long sharpness weapons are favored since they maintain levels of sharpness green or higher during the course of the hunt and therefore help maintain your damage. For gunners, your reticle changes based on the distance between you and the monster, applying the appropriate modifiers. A yellow reticle indicates you are not in critical range. If you are too far, your damage will nosedive. If you are too close to the monster, you will receive a minor damage penalty for shotgunning ammo at that range. An orange reticle indicates you are in the correct range called critical distance. You will apply full damage shots and the screen will shake each time you fire. If you aim at a monster unreasonably far, you will get the out of range warning and you will apply no damage until you move in closer. Critical distance varies on your shot types and ammo types, so make sure to keep track of the optimal positioning based on your choice of ammo. As a gunner, you always want to be in critical distance to avoid any decreases to damage. This is the limit of my gunner knowledge, so do not ask any follow-up questions in the comments. Please and thank you. Affinity dictates how often you crit. The higher it is, the more crits you land, 100% being the effective maximum. With positive affinity, your default crit modifier is a 25% increase and crit boost level 3 increases that modifier to 40%. With negative affinity, a negative crit reduces your damage to 75%. There is no known method to reduce your affinity using skills. Regular crits are denoted by a red flash and negative crits are denoted by a dark crimson flash. Weakness exploit and crit eye are the notable affinity skills. Element damage cannot crit by default, only applying crit damage as part of the calculation if you have element crit up as a skill. The modifier applies a 40% boost to elemental damage at level 3. However, there is supposedly a hard cap to the element damage, forcing crit damage to apply a smaller boost than it should. Element crit damage is inferior to regular crit damage across the board. Because of this, you should never commit to element crit boost and base rise. If it becomes meta in Sunbreak, I will mention it in any future guides or armor set videos. Skills and stat boosting items function to alter various values in the formula, not having a designated position in the equation. These modifications include armor skills, ramp up skills, food skills, and item buffs. Skills that boost the same stat typically stack. Artillery and feline bombardier, for example, stack together to give a combined boost to explosion type attacks. Similarly, attack up, resuscitate, and other skills all stack together. On the other hand, items of the same category won't stack together, instead overriding the higher value, like in the case of demon drug being overwritten by demon powder. Hunting horn melodies are a separate category, working as a weapon buff applying to everyone in range. Make use of this knowledge when set building and writing up before hunt. So we have gone over everything in the first two equations. It's time to do a bit of algebra. To find the effective attack and effective element, you just plug in your values into a calculator and get one number for attack and element. Then you add them up to find your effective raw damage. This value represents your damage output at 100%, ignoring both hit zones and motion values. 
This is only used for comparing a weapon's damage output, which is useful for identifying the stronger armor set or weapon. However, this does not account for status or element favorability since you do not take into account motion values, hit zones, or thresholds. It only provides a rough estimate as to which build or weapon is stronger, not a definitive answer, which is why I created the final equation. Motion values are a major component in calculating your effective damage. Each weapon type has percentile modifiers on each attack, reducing your effective raw damage to produce your effective damage, albeit against a monster with no resistance. The faster a move is, the lower its motion values tend to be and vice versa. For example, Dual Blades has a max of 20 motion value on an attack due to its frequent attack speed, while Greatsword has multiple 100 plus motion value attacks due to its longer windups. Understanding your weapon type's motion values will be key to learning how to maximize your damage output. You use set building knowledge to increase your damage on paper and spam the highest motion value moves to actualize that damage. A hit zone reduces your effective raw damage producing your quote unquote actual effective damage. Think of it as a monster's defense and this section becomes simpler. Hit zones are broken up into various damage types like with motion values. These values represent percentages for each damage type on each body part of a monster. If your raw attack is blunt then you only apply the blunt values for hit zones to your damage. Same applies for cutting and pierce. Element and status are stacked on top of your default damage types, but status uses thresholds to determine its application and duration. When hitting a monster, it will produce yellow damage if it's a weak spot and white damage if it isn't a weak spot. Hit zones are nothing more than targets to aim for. You want to avoid hitting low value white zones and focus on high value yellow zones. To optimize damage, the head is typically the bullseye to focus on varying in effectiveness depending on the monster. To calculate your effective damage, take your effective attack and effective element, multiply them with the appropriate motion values and hit zone values, and then add them back together. The result of this equation is that it should match the numbers shown in game, assuming you included every value. It displays a true damage output of your weapon given a particular situation and input. In my opinion, this is more useful for optimizing sets and weapon choices against a specific matchup. This would be useful for determining whether to gem in one more point of attack or whatever skill you want to increase your damage output with. Like if this video was helpful to you, consider subscribing if you want to see more content like this. I'll be working on the threshold guide next, followed by part 4 of this mini-series. Title pending but it will cover what happens when you combine the knowledge of monster AI, thresholds, and damage calculation to optimize your hunts. I might post other videos in between to keep up with the YouTube wave. Anyways, that's all I've got for this one. Greedy Knight, signing out.